Welcome back to the Red Eye Garage. If you have a rusty old Jeep, this video is for you. I have one right here. Um, I'm going to show you how I replace rusty floor panels in a Jeep. If you have a CJ or a pickup or pretty much any other Jeep than an FC, you're in luck because of good companies like Kaiser Willys. Um, they make repair panels, so you can just buy it, cut it out, weld it in. Um, or if you're working on a CJ2 or 3 like these over here, um, it's flat metal. I didn't realize how um, beneficial that is until I started working on this. So there's really nothing flat on this and you can't buy any of these parts. So it's been a big challenge. But um, we're going to go step by step today, old school, and show you how I'm going to repair the floor pans in this FC150. Fair warning, this is not a restoration. This isn't going to be beautiful. It's not going to be textbook. Uh, I do things how I feel like it around here with what I have. Basic tools, minimal materials, um, and just get it done and run it. Um, as David Freiberger says, uh, don't get it right, just get it running. You know, that's how I am here. Like, enjoy it. I'd rather see you out uh, driving cobbled up stuff um, than make, waiting till it's perfect. If you wait for the perfect moment to do anything, or to drive anything, it's never gonna happen. So let's get on with it. So here's what we're dealing with. Um, people love to just throw metal over a problem. So this is aluminum, um, just a piece of aluminum sheet metal. It's probably like 16 gauge, it's pretty heavy. And they just used self-tapping screws right through the existing metal and based on looking up underneath this I don't think it was really that bad and a lot of times making a repair this way yeah now the floor is a little more sturdy but it's it's just gonna leave a place for moisture to get trapped and actually make the problem um, worse but a lot of people don't want to take the time or don't have the tools or knowledge to uh, repair it correctly so first step is uh, just like with anything else demolition so we got to strip this down which is going to be super easy because they just use screws and pop this panel up and see what's underneath there's a lot of sharp edges here too they left you know this you can tell they made this with tin snips whoever owned this jeep before me the only tools they had were tin snips and a chisel and a hammer. Anytime they needed to drill a hole, even in the grill, like in the important sheet metal, they just took a chisel and a hammer and pounded a hole in it. And so we've got sharp edges here. Place, you know, if you drop something, you're not going to get it back. And if you drive it in the rain, water comes up through here. Just a mess. All right, now's the interesting part. Okay. Well, I can see why they thought they needed a patch. So it looks like we got some Swiss cheese. Um, but overall, that's not bad at all. So, um, you know, yours might be worse than this. I expected a little bit worse than this. Um, but uh, yes. So now, now we can see what we're working with and pick our. Uh, best method to tackle this repair. This is an access panel on the FC. So there's some screws here and this just gets tucked under. So I'm gonna take that out and keep it as a template because it has my dimension right here. And then um, we're just gonna start removing metal back to where um, we have good metal to weld to. So that's my new motto um, is just cut back to where there's good original metal, just enough to weld to and leave the rest. It's also really gonna help you um, shape and form and fit. So if I cut everything out, I'm gonna forget where you know a bend is or where this valley is. Um, I just replaced these pieces um, and it was pretty hard because I had to cut out a lot of it. So I really lost the contour and I know it's not perfect now. So the more original metal that you can leave, the better, in my opinion. Um, and again, this is not for restoration, this is just for a runner. So now we know what we're dealing with. I'm going to um, set up the camera and start cutting this out. Okay, so I'm going to base all my 
measurements off of this piece right here. Uh, there's a seam. And I'm going to come up here. Also, I really like this, um, what's it called, fast cap flexible tape measure. So if you have any bends in your work, your measurements come out accurate. So the, uh, the point it's rotted up the most is right here. So I'm going to come down five inches and make a mark there. I'm going to come over here and do five inches as well. And that's going to give me um, a nice rectangular piece. So even though this metal is good right here, it's just much easier to have a straight piece right across. So we're going to replace everything from there down. I'm going to try to take this out in one piece so I can retain uh, this shape. So I can, I can use a little section of this to help me bend the metal in the correct shape. Just make it a lot nicer and uh, keep it more original looking. I got most of it cut out. Um, I bent this up so I'm going to drill out these spot welds. I don't want to damage the wheel arch any more than I have to. And by leaving uh, a little bit of this metal on here, it gives me something to, to pull as once I start cutting those spot welds. Um, but on this side, it's in real bad shape over here. I'll, I know there's a lot of controversy about Harbor Freight stuff, but this is one thing from them that if you're doing old, you know, working on old cars like this, these are actually really good. This is the spot weld cutter. They're not super cheap. I don't remember. It's been a couple years since I bought. I buy a couple at a time. I don't know. They're un under ten bucks, like maybe five ninety nine or six bucks or something like that. They are the cutters are two sided. When these teeth chip, you can unthread that and spin it around. But it works really good for drilling out these rusty old spot welds. And I go in with. Uh, I mean, it has a pointy tip on it, an arbor, and I think you're supposed to use a center punch or something. I use a tiny drill bit and I drill a pilot in each spot weld and then I come in and drill it out. Just like that. We'll go right down the line and we can pop this off Then you just take a flap disc and smooth those out and we're left with a good um, surface to weld to without really damaging the surface underneath. If you drill too far obviously you can go through both pieces but um, cool little tool and doesn't always work, but it sure beats, uh, you know, cutting and chiseling and ripping the metal. Once you get them all cut, you'll end up with something like this. And just twist that off there. And now you can see we just have the little piece that's welded. We can clean that up. We're now to the portion of this job I call the can of worms because there's an inner rocker under here. That's why I stopped and that has a flange um, bent that way, which I could drill the spot welds out. Um, but this part of the floor is actually pretty solid, even though it's pitted, but you won't see that once it's painted up. It just has to be solid enough to weld to. So now I need to decide what am I going to leave this inner rocker. Um, or cut the inner rocker out and replace the floor all the way over and rebuild this piece um, because it is attached to this front the lance which is shot and I'm gonna have to rebuild so now it's like do I want to dig into the whole thing or just replace the floor and do this later it's gonna be a lot easier to do this now you can see the bottom edge of this is toast and that's what the rocker ties into so um, as much as I don't want to, it would be smart for me to just stop, carefully drill all these spot welds out and mark, you know, measure where this goes and all that. That will really help me rebuild the outer rocker and keep it all strong. Just be best overall, but it's definitely more work. And then same way over here. This is so, so I could probably get a weld to stick to that. But from here over, I need to replace couple inches up and then same way over here so it's definitely it's it's not a matter of just a flat piece of metal in here and that's why people just slap those patches over it so it's super tempting um, but I'm not in a hurry I want it done mostly right 
um, but without spending months sitting here waiting for it to be perfect. So uh, I'm going to just keep chipping away at, you know, cutting these spot welds out and cutting back until we have good metal. And then uh, my favorite part is when it starts to go back together because it's, uh, you're working with good metal, you're welding, you're adding instead of cutting out, and then you know exactly what you're working with. So uh, I'm going to keep cutting and pop back in a second and show you where we're at. I started digging around more and uh, I found this piece is all Swiss cheese down here too. So it's pretty good from here up. So I think it's going to be best if I just um, come up to the, to the start of these ridges that I wanted to avoid and just come straight across and replace this whole piece. Um, it's just going to be easier and since obviously this needs done too, it's going to give me a good contour line for rebuilding this outside piece and give me something good to weld uh, the floor in and the inner rocker, blah, blah, blah. But what I wanted to stop here and show you um, is take a flap disc or even a wire wheel will work. It'll show you the highs and lows and the spot welds are a low spot. So all these little circles with paint are spot welds and you'll be able to see better in person with the light and that's where I use my little pilot bit and then I'll go through with my spot weld cutter. Um, but I also want to take out a moment to just remind you don't get overwhelmed. The, you know I said the can of worms. Don't look at the whole Jeep because <laughs> I've got stuff to fix everywhere. Only focus on what you're working on right now or you'll stop. You'll get overwhelmed or you'll you'll just if you're like me, it'll be like, oh, I don't even want to tackle it, so I won't do it at all. So right now, I'm just focused on like a two-foot section of this Jeep. I'm not even worried about the outside. I'm just worried about the floor and this and this. That's it. I'm not even going to look at the other stuff. That's a tomorrow problem. And then um, once you start taking care of that and snowballing, it'll be like, oh, that's done. I'll move on to this. And then you can look back. I do encourage you to look back at what you have fixed. So don't look forward. Enjoy where you're at and um, be proud of what you've done to the vehicle so far. So I've fixed a lot of stuff. Look how shiny and clean and new this is. So don't focus on the crappy stuff that keeps popping up everywhere. Just focus on where you're at and the good things and the hard work you've done so far. Because even though these Jeeps are simple and small, there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of money and time involved. So um, this is where I'm at right now. My next job is to just drill out these spot welds, cut this off and move on forward one step at a time. So this really shows you how um, sporadic, I mean, they just put spot welds everywhere. Um, with this tool, you don't want to go through more than the first layer. Sometimes the whole piece pops out like that. Other times like this, it's stuck. Um, but what I usually do is you want to cut on a slower speed and you can tell when you get through the first layer because um, if it's rusty like this you'll get like rust dust starting to come out. So I don't know if you could see that or not but the amount of rust dust, it went from like silver metal to dirty looking rust dust, if that makes sense. And that's how I can usually tell. Also, if you have a little pressure on the panel, like put a screwdriver behind it, just kind of wedge it in there as you're cutting, it'll pop, it'll snap out as you're moving forward. But you'll get the hang of it. I cut on the first speed. You can use lube. It will make your cutter last longer, but I find it annoying to stop and put lube on it. And then when you go to weld stuff back together, you get smoke and it's harder to paint. So it's totally up to you. As cheap as these are, they're double sided. Buy four or five of them. Cut slow. If you cut slow, they last a lot longer and you don't need as much lubricant. So that's my tip for these little guys. Well, I've gotten a little carried away. I did what I told you I wasn't going to do, is cut out more than I need to. But technically, it needed to come out. So this is where we're at. So I've got all these spot welds cut out. And I'm replacing that inner rocker panel. And I decided it was easier just to cut the whole floor out. 
Um, I'm leaving this piece to keep this transition. There's a lot of, there's multiple angles on that bend and this piece is pretty solid. So it's gonna be a lot easier just to make a really simple rectangular piece. Um, but everything is kind of based off that inner rocker. It's what the outer rocker or quarter panel folds around to. So um, it wasn't in terrible shape, but it'll be easier to remake this whole piece than it would be to um, just replace this lower section. And the back side of it's pretty badly pitted. So this is a good template. It's in really good shape for that. Um, so I'm gonna trace this onto a pattern, you know, piece of paper for a pattern and just test everything. And then once I'm sure I've got the right shape, I'm actually gonna pound these flanges down flat and then I'll have a, a perfect pattern. So it's in good enough shape that I can do that, um, but it's not really usable for anything else. So, but having especially this curved part, cause I have to remake that's what gives the front corner the shape that it has. So that's where we're at. So now I'm going to make a pattern and we'll pop back in a second. Got the first piece knocked out. I didn't bend the flanges yet, but it's uh, cut out and ready to go. And then I thought I better make a pattern on paper and flip it for the opposite side. Cause I think the driver's side is rusted out pretty bad. So I might not have a, a good template. So now I have a left and a right. And I just have to mark it and break the flanges on it. And this piece will be ready to weld in. I'm using 18 gauge, uh, just plain steel. So let's rock and roll. All right, I got the piece finished, ready to roll. So you can see the difference. Hopefully it's a big improvement. Hopefully it fits, but I have about an hour to bang this out. Now that I have the template, it should go faster on the other side. So um, I used a break for almost none of it just because of the weird shapes. I think I did that side and that side with a break and then the rest was all just hand forming in the vise with uh, different pieces of uh, plate steel. So there she blows. One little thing I do since I don't have a spot welder anywhere I have to weld um, from like you know two flanges together. I'll just drill a couple holes clamp it together and then you can fill the hole with weld. You have to make sure you're good and hot so that it actually penetrates and attaches both sides. And then it's basically like a spot weld. You can grind it flush or if you have the heat welder heat right, you just leave it and then it looks almost like a real spot weld. So now I'm gonna fit this piece in place. So it looks like it fits pretty darn good. And so where I drilled the spot welds before is where I will weld this one in. And then on this back side here and up front, I have drilled the other pieces or, you know, the other flanges. So I'm pretty it. happy with that fitment. So we'll get this clamped up prep the surfaces, and then weld it. Um, so first piece going in is a big step. From there, everything should sort of just fall into place, hopefully, if we did it right. I will um, prime, I'll prime the inside of this because there's really not going to be a good way to get paint on it until I do the outer rocker. So you can hit any of this with paint. If you can use weld through primer, that's the best way to go and start tacking this thing back together. All right, I got that inner rocker welded in place. I think it turned out pretty good. It follows the contour 
of what's left of this piece, so I'll be rebuilding those in a future video. But this is kind of going to be the building block of fixing this floor. So next piece will be the main piece. And I got a small patch here, and then that's pretty much it for the uh, interior part of this repair. So you can see this has the contour of the outer cab corner and then the next piece after the floor will be this uh, inner fender well repair. So there's lots to do but it's uh, coming back together now and uh, should go pretty well from here. So we're down to the good metal which makes life easy. So um, I think that's going to be it for this episode. It's another late night here in the Red Eye Garage. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.